Hi guys, Tracy here with another scrapbooking process video. Today I have something a little different for you and really, really exciting. I do have a process video and that's going to follow very shortly, but I thought I would talk a little bit about what I'm scrapbooking today. And I also have a really exciting giveaway for you guys. So uh, what I'm doing today is I'm actually working with the June main kit, embellishment kit, and the extra paper is what I'm working with today from the Hip Kit Club. And uh, you guys, if you follow me, you know that I've actually made a couple of layouts using the July kit. Uh, my June and July kit came in the same box, and so I was so excited to scrapbook with the July kit that I kind of forgot about the June kit here. And meanwhile, uh, I got a notification that my August kit is actually at the post office waiting for me. So there is no way I'm going to get a chance to kill this kit. And by kill a kit, I mean use it all up to its max. And to be honest, I almost never kill a kit. I'm really bad at that. I just find that because I have a full-time job and a family and other things on the go, uh, as well as my YouTube channel, I just never get to kill a kit. And I try to not feel too badly about it, but it's really nice to be able to use up all of a kit and, and feel like you've really got your money's worth for the kit. And so my good friend Irit Landgraf has a class all about how to use up all the bits of a of a kit and really get every last bit of scrappy goodness out of your scrapbooking kit. And her in her class, her videos actually focus on this very kit, the June Hip Kit Club kit. And so uh, what I thought I would do is make a layout with this June kit because I really want to use these supplies. It's just such a beautiful kit. I really, really love it. And I'm so thankful to Kimberly for sending me these kits. I definitely want to use the kit. I've already shown it on my YouTube channel, so I'll link that in the information section below if you're interested in seeing this kit up close and seeing what comes in it. But today I really want to scrapbook with it. I'm sure that I'm gonna scrapbook it with it today and then the next time I scrapbook, I'm sure I'm gonna to want to use the August kit. So what I was thinking, uh, I was speaking with Irit and the two of us decided that what I would do is I'll make one layout with this kit and then I'm actually going to give away all of my leftovers from the main kit, the embellishment kit and the extra paper and the cardstock add-on too. I have all I have all of the main scrapbooking kits. I have cardstock, I have extra paper, I have the main kit and the embellishment kit. I'm going to use it today on one layout and then I'm going to give away all of my leftovers. And Irit is going to give the winner a place in her class on using the most of your kit. That class is called Kit Cut Go with Irit. And so she's going to give the winner a place in the class. I'm going to give the winner lots and lots of supplies. Even though I will have used this kit once, it will you'll have a chance to finish it off. And uh, Irit has lots and lots of examples of how to use this kit and get the most out of it. And I've seen her layouts and they're absolutely gorgeous. She does such wonderful, beautiful work. I will link her channel in the information section below. I'll link her class in the information section below. I'm gonna do a layout using this kit right now. And then I'm also going to do a, a, a video at the end that just shows what my leftovers are so that the winner knows what, they're, what they will be getting. And the giveaway will take place on that other video. So make sure that after you watch this video, you go and watch the giveaway video because that's where I'll ask you to leave a comment and then I'll just randomly choose a winner. The winner will get my kit leftovers and a place in a reads class. So let's get on with the process video. So I'm going to start by trimming down my photos. Now these are six different photos that I have printed using my Epson PictureMate charm. I've printed them at 2.2 by, no, 2.5 by 2.5. These are all photos that are have Instagram filters on them. They all have the Valencia filter. And whenever I'm scrapbooking multiple photos, I like them to have the same filter so that they look more pulled together and cohesive. And uh, these, I tried to pick photos that represented some of the different uh, places that we went to on our weekend getaway in Moncton. Now I do have those six photos all cut apart, but what I want to do is use them in a grid, a two by three square 
grid. And so I just laid them out here, mostly chronological. I think they're all chronologic. I can't quite. Yes, yes, they're all chronological. But I was also thinking just about design and I wanted the two butterfly photos to definitely be together and the the zoo was the last place we went so I wanted those two photos to be at the end and uh, the other ones don't really matter. I'm not really telling a story with this layout. Uh, what I'm doing is it, this is sort of like a summary layout. I'm just going to put the date and the place that we went and uh, then subsequent layouts will be about the about the zoo and about the water park and about the butterfly place and I think I'm also going to make a layout about the dinner theater place that we went because that was really really fun. Now I love this get weekend getaway sticker and so I thought I would use that for my title and I'm looking through these Amy Tangerine uh, phrase stickers. These are a th set of thickers from Amy Tangerine and I love the word awesome so I use the word awesome quite a lot and so I thought that it made a really nice title for me. It's not going to stay exactly the way it is. I'm going to personalize it a little bit but I, I mostly like it. Now the weekend getaway sticker is from the sheet of Oasis stickers from Crate Paper that came in the kit. And then as I mentioned, the awesome is from Amy Tangerine Thickers. And I'm just looking at my uh, little little black card that I keep samples of all of my my white markers on. I actually don't have samples of my paint pens on here, but I'm using the back just as a place to test out my marker and see how it works. Uh, because these stickers have like a painted um, edge on them, they're like a finished chipboard with a shiny edge, I chose to use a paint pen instead of a regular white pen. A regular white gel pen would work on these as well, but I wanted it to have more of a hand-drawn uh, look. Like I, I, I like the how this looks almost like a like a poster board project from school or something this this font and so I wanted to kind of emphasize that by having a much thicker outline than a gel pen would give me so that's why I use my paint pen and the paint pen I'm, I think I'm going to show it to you there you go uh, is PBO deco marker and I have the 1.2 millimeter tip. I do have a video somewhere on my channel about these markers. It might be called white paint pens or white markers. I'm not sure. I have a couple of different videos on these markers so uh, you can always search my channel and I'll try to remember to look for that and link it if I can. I'm putting a second coat on and you just have to be careful with these paint pens. If you put too many coats on, it starts it, it starts to get to the point where the current coat that you're putting on is kind of scraping off some of the previous coat. So I wouldn't do more than two coats, but two coats makes it nice and bright white. And I really like the kind of hand-drawn look that that gives me because it's so imperfect. It's already imperfect, but like the layer, the letters are sort of overlapped. Now I'm thinking about choosing those yellow stickers that come in the kit. They look kind of greenish yellow. Uh, they're exclusive to hip kit. And I'm thinking about using those to spell out Moncton, but I think that that's going to make my title way too big. And I already, because I'm using so many photos, I already have a limited space to work with. So I'm thinking maybe I won't do that but I'll, I'll keep it in the back of my head. Now, I'm sorry that I forgot to zoom out. Basically, all that I'm doing here is I'm looking through some of the bigger embellishments because if I plan to use big embellishments, I'm going to have to design around them because I, I already have a bigger hunk of photos than I usually use. I usually scrapbook a three by three inch photo or maybe a four by four inch photo. And so this is a bigger, a bigger, piece of photo that I'm used to using. Now I'm picking my photo, my papers now from the kit and I did forget to zoom out, but I realize it and I'm going to go back and show you all of these papers. So don't, don't worry. I know that I'm kind of, it's hard to know what I'm doing here, but there we go. So I'm going to start by taking the paper off of this Pink Fresh Studio, the, not the paper, I'm going to start by taking the manufacturer strip off the Pink Fresh Studio paper that I'm going to use for my background. And now I slowed this down so that I can tell you what I did. So this is the Pink Fresh Studio paper from Dream On that came in the kit. I love this for a background and I really love how all those circles kind of mimic the, the way that the photo, it's almost like the circles are in the grid and then the photos are on a grid. Now I like the colors of the birds. This is from Pink Paisley from Paige Evans. I like the colors in the birds and I also like that there's birds because this is there are some animals. And then this paper here brings in all of the colors that are in my photos and also more circles. I like the colors in these clouds, but I'm not sure if I'm going to be able to use them. So I'm going to put that aside 
definitely the the colors I like that the colors in that circle paper include some reds and some oranges now this is a really nice orangey color but it's almost like a salmony orange so it picks up on the orange in the tiger but also there's kind of orange undertones in the in the flamingos and I just really like this paper with the diagonal across it so I'm going to keep that out too and then I like the car like the packed up car on this one and so I might use that but it turns out I won't So all of these papers come in the hip kit. Oh, and I forgot I'm also going to use this striped paper and I thought I'd use it for a mat, but I'm actually going to use it to, I'm gonna grab some strips from it and put some strips at the top and bottom. And this is an exclusive paper to the kit. It's called, it's from Hip Kit Club. And at first I was gonna run my trimmer around it this way and then I decided to take it across like along the other angle because the, the, uh, the, what am I trying to say? The stripes are closer together when I cut it this way. So I'm going to get more stripes in the space. And now um, I'm kind of trying to think about my design because I have these two big things that I need to design around this hunk of photos and like this grid of photos. I keep calling it a hunk. It's a grid of photos. And uh, then my title. And so I'm pretty sure I'm going to put these strips up here and down there. So I'll start by doing that. I am putting my wider and thicker strip at the bottom because that helps to anchor it a little bit more. And my thinner strip is at the top. I'm going to mat this grid of photos on this uh, pink the, this uh, peachy orangey pink color of pattern paper and then this seems to be the only layout that I really like like this is the only design that I really like that I can think of is to have uh, awesome weekend getaway down in the bottom right hand corner it overlaps nicely with those photos it's not going to cover anything hugely important and I just like the design it's going to end up giving me a diagonal design across my page from the top left hand corner to the bottom right hand corner and now I'm thinking I just want to do something different like I feel like Ugh, I'm tired of rectangles and squares and rectangles and squares. And so I decided to cut myself a hand cut circle and use that as one of my layers. And I immediately hate it, but let's just follow it a little bit further and see what I can do with it. So I'll start by doing a bold outline around it. This is my Zig Writer, the bold side of my Zig Writer pen. And I like it a little bit more, but I still don't like it. I, I basically, I'm trying to use that paper because it brings in all the colors of my photo and, and I think it's gonna unify my page unify my page and make it look look better so then I thought about doing this I've seen this before I don't think I've ever done this design where you kind of discontinue a, a shape on one side and pick it up on the other side uh, I don't like that it looks a lot like a bow tie to me and I can't get that out of my head and so I um it, it's it's a hand cut circle too I'm kind of half thinking maybe I should have used my circle cutter and cut like a proper circle but then the whole idea was that I wanted to do something different. So I'm going to go with this a little bit further. I have pieced together that that it, it's more of an oval than a circle. I'm piecing it together because I'm thinking I might keep it all in one piece and have just a little bit of it going off the edge of the paper. And I'm liking that a little bit better. I, you know, to be honest, I'm still not crazy about it, but I'm going to keep on going with it just to see if I like it a little bit more. Now, I, I kind of feel like that paper is really kind of like grabbing your attention and it looks out of place. So I grabbed two more strips of the same paper and I'm going to put some strips on the top and the bottom to layer with that plain blue and white striped paper. I like the blue and white striped paper because it's such a nice contrast, like it's a nice high contrast paper, but then adding the uh, the strips of the other paper pulls the color from that pattern paper in the circle in the middle and pulls it to the top and the bottom and I, I don't know I just I feel like I like it better that way so that's what I'm going to go with before I go too much further I'm just going to glue this down because it's get it's a little tricky to to design around it when it, it keeps because it's two separate pieces it keeps separating and it's just a bit of a pain here I'm going to use my Zig 2A glue pen, which 
ah, I should have used a different adhesive. I don't like that adhesive anymore. I used to use it all the time, um, but it doesn't really, like, unless if you glue stuff together when it's really, really wet, like right away, it becomes more of a temporary adhesive, so it doesn't hold all that well compared to some of the other liquid adhesives that I like to use, like Tombow Mono Multi or even Tombow Aqua would have been a better glue to use for that. So this is my general design. I've got these two large butterflies. And again, I'm starting with the largest element. So my big grid of photos, that large oval, the title, those two large butterflies and the large journaling piece. If I want to get all of those things on this page, I'm going to have to put them down first because other because this this is just I'm working with bigger elements than I'm used to working with so I layered the word awesome so that it's kind of hanging off the bottoms of those photos and overlapping with the photos and then I'm using some Stampin' Up dimensional adhesive to stick that sucker down there we go I like it I like it a lot. So what that does using the dimensional adhesive allows me to layer the flat sticker over top of the chipboard sticker, which is what I wanted. I want, I, I don't want awesome over weekend. I want weekend over awesome because awesome is bigger and you can definitely read it no matter what, because it's so much bigger. And if awesome covered weekend, it would be, it would increase, it would decrease the, the legibility of the word weekend, which is already less legible because it's kind of, it, it's kind of buried in glitter a little bit and it, it's just less legible than the word awesome. So here we go. We're, we're, I've tucked everything in. I've glued some things down and now I'm thinking about embellishing. And I'm still not loving that big hand cut oval, but I'm thinking that maybe the more embellishing I do, the more I will like that hand cut oval. And I want to put a flamingo on this. I chose the flamingo picture. I actually took the flamingo picture knowing that I had a lot of flamingo embellishments. There, was, there are some flamingos in this kit. And then there's also, I have a lot of other flamingo uh, die cuts and pieces from other collections as well. So I took a bunch of pictures of the flamingos and I wanted to make sure I use the flamingos on this page. So, uh, but the flamingo by itself is just too much pink. There's the pink in the flamingo and then the pink in the awesome and then the pink in the flamingo picture too. So I, I layered it with that little banner, like fishtail banner phrase sticker. And that sticker says, let's get away. And now I'm just looking through, I keep my embellishments in these little uh, cases. They're little cases for four by six photos and I have a whole bunch of them and I just temporarily keep my, my uh, embellishment sets in those with, with the kit so that I can keep the sets together. And then when I de-stash, I do sort them by color and put them in with my general embellishment stash, which is also stored in those same little, little containers. So now I'm just working on embellishing and basically I, I, these are sort of like placeholders, these little puffy stickers. I want to do a couple of little clusters down by the G and getaway and I want to do something over the flamingo's head, the die cut flam or the sticker flamingo. And so I put those two puffy stickers there just to hold the space. Puffy stickers are pretty easy to readjust, like you, they don't stick to the page quite as well. Uh, so you can always move them easily. So they're nice things to hold an idea for you. And now I like the idea of layering this puffy sticker that says you and me over top of that die cut piece. So most of these die cut pieces are all from the Vicky Booten die cuts that came in the kit. And then there's also a set of Vicky Booten frames that came in the kit too. And that's where this frame is from. I thought about doing a little switcheroo there, but no, I like the gold frame a little bit better. I do like the idea of introducing the blue color there, but I like the, that gold frame a lot better. So that's what I'm gonna go with. The puffy stickers, by the way, are from Bella Boulevard. They came in the kit. And then also that little wooden button embellishment that's in the middle of the blue butterfly. 
is also from that's from the hip kit club it's an exclusive to the kit and so I just pulled out one of the dates we were actually there for three days so I, I picked the first day as the date that I'm going to use on this roller date stamp and I just used my regular office roller date stamp from Staples and I staped I, I stamped August 18th I used uh, I, I used stays on ink because I knew that some of it would end up stamping onto the foil part and so regular ink would smear and then these are some little uh, from the Chamel collection little enamel pieces a little little enamel shape stickers and I'm going to sprinkle those throughout and I'm going to change my mind on where I put them this is not the best time to add small embellishments I don't know exactly why I'm doing that but for some reason I'm adding the small embellishments now I really prefer doing that at the end again that I I cut that that puffy sticker in half the circle one because it was hanging off the page and then I thought maybe I'll use it somewhere over here I don't know where but I just put it there for now just to hold on to it and keep the space to kind of re like remind me of that idea now one of the things that I love with die cut butterflies or sticker butterflies is to run your sewing machine through and it kind of like running a I just have to rethread it uh, running a stitch up the length of the butterfly right over the body and if you do it twice and leave the threads hanging, it actually looks like the threads are the antenna of the butterfly. It gives the butterfly some really beautiful dimension and makes it look nice and anchored to the page and like it belongs there. But also those little uh, whimsical threads. See, I have to keep re-gluing these strips because I used the wrong glue. But I'm gonna sew over it. I just wanted it to just I wanted it to stay still while I was sewing, so that's why I added the glue before I did that. It's not a great idea to to sew over glue. I'm using a very inexpensive sewing machine here. It's just a little half size Kenmore, and uh, it, it, it's it's not the end of the. I bought it specifically for scrapbooking, and uh, if you just get your if you're concerned about using glue with your sewing machine, just make sure you get it serviced regularly, more often than I do, which is never. But <laughs> uh, it, I've never had it serviced and it's still working. I have had some trouble with it, like with the tension on this machine. But uh, other than that, it's been a really, it's been quite a workhorse. I, I use it quite a lot and in a way that it's not intended and it still, it still keeps working. So I love that sewing machine. I keep thinking I need to get a new one because it keeps sort of breaking and and but then it keeps on working I, I don't know how it magically fixes itself but I think it's broken and then I go to use it again anyways and it works so oh well <laughs> I'm not complaining so the journaling I'm doing here is I'm really just making a list of the places that we went or some of the main places we went Magic Mountain Butterfly World Zoo that's all that I wrote there and I use my sharpie pen for that and now I'm just having a look at the sticker sheet and trying to, uh, this isn't going to go anywhere, uh, but I thought that this little banner, I have trouble using these banner stickers. I like them a lot, but I rarely use them because I can't, oh, I, I never like them on my pages. I like them on other people's pages. So anyhow, I gave up on that idea. Uh, but what I'm trying to do here is introduce some glitter because there's glitter down in, in Weekend Getaway. And I want there to be some glitter. I do have some foil on, on in this cluster, which is the uh, the frame that I have the date on. But I wanted some glitter over here as well. And sorry that this is out of frame. I'm basically putting a li little tiny geo tag up in the top left hand corner. You'll see it in a minute when I hopefully zoom out or move the layout around. So now I'm just grabbing a couple of more embellishments that I think might work with this. This I think is a pineapple slice. It looks like a pineapple slice. Anyhow, I'm cutting it in half and I'm going to layer it under the butterfly wings that I have already sort of covered up. And I like how that puffy sticker looks, the UME puffy sticker. It, I like how it looks with the uh, frame over top of it. And then I just grabbed a couple of more embellishments and layered, remember that little placeholder puffy sticker, the navy blue one with the arrows down by the G and getaway? I just layered that and another little star enamel shape on top of uh, another die cut piece from the Vicky Booten. I grabbed the fun die cut piece from Vicky Booten and a little tag with the date on it. I'm just basically adding a few things around the page that I think 
will add to the story that I'm t trying to tell, which is a very generic, we went on a weekend getaway type of a story. Because as I mentioned, I will be recording more specific details in some other pages that are to come. Now, I didn't feel like these Pink Fresh Studio die cuts really coordinated with the page that I was making, but the, I really liked the little outline hearts and stars. And so I pulled some of those out and I also really love that camera. And so I'm going to use the camera as well. I This travel piece that I'm layering here is from the B Vicky Booten die cuts. And so is this. And I just, I just like how that emphasizes that butterfly a little bit more. And I'm going to... I actually changed the date stamp so that it's a second day. Uh, so I put the 18th on the top roller date stamp and then the 19th on this one. If I had stamped another roller date stamp somewhere, it would have been the 20th, but uh, I didn't. So Now I'm just layering that uh, little camera behind the butterfly and over the tag that has the date on it. I forgot to glue that pineapple slice down. It's not, I don't know. I guess it's a pineapple slice, but I'm just using it as a shape. And now here I'm thinking about maybe stamping out the word Moncton. I know that a small stamp set came in one of the recent kits. And then I'm also thinking about maybe using letter stickers. And then I decided that my own handwriting would be more, a more casual way to write it. And so I just used my own handwriting. I wrote Moncton, New Brunswick. I'm just going to layer it under that geo tag that you didn't see me put on, but now you get to see. It has more sparkle as well. And now before I add this little embellishment, this is a little circle embellishment from the Vicky Booten die cuts. I'm just going to uh, put a little piece of string on it and I just tied a single little knot and then I'll layer fun like this over top of the oval and the photo and now I'm going to layer some of these wooden buttons over top of the fun embellishment from Vicki Booten and that balances off both color and shape like it kind of I, I really wanted to repeat the circular shape in many different ways on this page and so I've got that oval hand cut piece in the background and then I tried to include lots of different iterations of circles or circular shapes or partial circles all throughout just to kind of offset the square um, geometric I guess shape of the photos themselves and so now I'm just looking at adding some final touches here I'm going to trim off the edges of anything that's hanging over and thinking about what last minute touches I might want to make oh adding the neon flamingo up there really I think makes a big difference on this page because it felt like too contained, too perfect, too predictable and I think that that uh, the addition of that flamingo up there just interrupts your line of like that curved line that you see it's actually a, a, a marker curved line of the of the oval and behind and that that uh, flamingo just does a really nice job of interrupting that oval and giving your eye something interesting to look at. So I'm also going to add some more interest up here just to uh, draw your eye up to that cute little flamingo. And I wanted to, one of the last things that I do is add these word or phrase stickers. And I just wanted to kind of like plaster them all over the place so that it had kind of like when you slap uh, bumper stickers or sticker travel stickers all over your suitcase or all over the bumper of your car or your trailer or something. I wanted it to have like a casual slapped on kind of look. And I wanted it to look a little bit overboard like there's just a lot and uh, so that's what I did I just added a whole bunch of them everywhere that there was some space for one and then I added vacay right in the middle of my photos just again something unpredictable and uh, unex I guess unexpected so the other thing I did was I just stuck in that little heart over on the uh, on the right hand side there. There's a little scrap of paper stuck there too. So here's that Moncton, New Brunswick. That's a die cut from Vicki Booten with a little um, geotag sparkly sticker from the uh, Oasis stickers. And oh, I love how these clusters look. 
they're just so pretty and interesting and uh, casual. I really wanted it to look kind of like thrown together, especially the top layer, like the final details. I didn't want it to look too contrived or perfect, which is <laughs> kind of nice to not try to make it perfect because that gives you an excuse for it to be imperfect. So I really love how the butterfly looks with the stitching on it. It's one of my favorite things. I used to do that all the time when I first started uh, scrapbooking. When I first started sewing on my scrapbook pages, that was one of the first things that I did was I would sew my die cut butterflies that I would make with my slice or my Cricut. Uh, so I'm, I'm really happy to return to that idea after a bit of a, of, of a uh, break from using <laughs> that design technique. And now here are the close-up photos. I hope that you guys enjoyed this process video. I really, really loved making this page and I so wish that I could use more of this kit. It's a really beautiful kit. It's so much fun and uh, it's perfect for this time of year when we're taking little road trips and little getaways. It's kind of like a great collection of embellishments and papers for like local travel instead of really far away travel. That's what I really love about this kit. So if you're interested in winning my leftovers and a seat in Irit's Kit Cut Go class, uh, please check out the next video. It is linked in this video. Uh, so it should be pretty easy by the time you see this uh, to link over to the other video. And make sure that you leave me a comment over there and let me know um, that you want to win that the, my leftovers and the place in the class. Thanks so much for watching and feel free to leave me a comment on this video if you have anything to say about this page or about scrapbooking, summer vacations in general. Take care and have a really great scrappy week.